Oh, oh, oh. Look at that one. That would have made some noises for sure. But they definitely look like they were being used pretty good. Hi guys, Fraser from Lifco Hydraulics. We have today troubleshooting of a premature failure on a triple gear pump. Why would somebody have a triple gear pump as opposed to maybe a single? In case you need something that's independent, meaning that you'd have three separate circuits there. Maybe the first one is running the wheels and the second one is running a platform that goes up and down. That means though that you could have a failure in one and not in the others. So while you could seem like the whole assembly has failed, in fact, maybe just one of the pumps has failed. This is a simplified explanation, but you get the idea. Each one is running something independently. So let's see if we can figure out what went wrong with this one. This is not a customer says something's wrong. We don't think that there is. We know something very serious happened here. There is metal there. Don't know where that came from yet. Pretty worn down, pretty typical for used gears. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, they're a little tricky. Just because you got to slide them all the way down these studs. Some wire marks, mm -hmm. nothing too crazy yet though. There's some kind of weird marks in there. It's not like full lines, it's just like yeah, a little Yeah, it's, like, at the it's top. like the gear, like the, when the gears weren't moving, they like yeah. jammed into it or something. Exciting. They're both, they're both pretty flat. Like they definitely look like they were being used pretty good. Yeah, I would imagine that these probably uh, don't work very well. I don't know what those orange arrows are referring to. This is the last bearing carrier, so there's got to be some damage here. Oh, there's lots of stuff in there. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that one. Straight down. Something is going on there. You come and look in this side right here, too. Something. In jammed up in there. If you look at these ones, like see how thick they're supposed to be? Okay. Look at, like this is, that's worn right, worn right out. Wow. That would have made some noises for sure. Okay, this is this is interesting. So okay. I don't know if you can really tell on the camera there, but these are perfectly circular. Yeah. You can see that this is ovaled right out. Oh. All right, moving on. This one's also oblong here. Huh. Not good. Now this is what I'm worried about. Like, why is it doing this? So this is your drive gear, and this is called the driven gear. In my eyes, this shaft right here is pretty, it's not moving, and it's not that worn on this side, but this side got pushed really hard into that way, so I'm wondering if it was over pressure pressurization which caused this to just dig in 
Hey, Russell, can you come here for a second? <laughs> what would cause this to dig into the housing that way? Uh, it's definitely over pressurization. It's just digging in so far this way that it's even starting, it, it just works its way up the side as well. Putting resistance on the outlet, which pushes the gears towards the inlet. Right. But why just one side though? Like this side is the one that's Yeah, bad. like this whole... This one isn't. Well, this side is pretty bad as well. Not Obviously not as bad as that <laughs> side, but mm. since this one's being held by the drive, or this motor or whatever, yeah. that could be in a stiffer position because the motor that's driving it won't allow it to move right. potentially as much. Well, that's what I kind of said be. because like this one's obviously like... Yeah. But if like I bet if you take that out, and you just put this one in, like it's, even this by itself without it attached to something is pretty stiff. Like that's not really yeah. loose at all. Yeah. I'd have to dig deeper into that because I, I actually can't give a def definite answer right now. That's all right. I'm just going to keep going and take pictures and uh, yeah. figure it out. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, Russell. I would agree with Russell on this one. In the idler gear, the overpressurization would go right to the bushings, and once that thin coat of oil is not enough to support it, it would wear down the bushings, also producing the varnish at the same time. Uh, that flattening you see on the gears, that's from digging into the housing. The housing wore out and the gears wore out. Which wears out first? Typically the housing would wear out because it's a soft cast iron steel, and then the gears are hardened steel. So this would have been a lot of force to wear out the, those gears. Got that big groove in there. Oh, look at that big lip there. So it definitely dug in right there a lot. If I had to guess, this port got overpressurized like crazy. Uh, making everything go down. Yeah. Because it is, if you look at it, it is more right on the, this is the inlet section, this is the outlet. Yep. So if pressure, if it's getting pressurized this way, it didn't dig here, but it did dig straight down here, yep. which uh, that tells me that something was. They got to check whatever's connected to that. Yeah. Yeah. When it starts to do that, it's called var varnishing. But yeah, it's basically, it's yeah, <laughs> basically is a heat buildup and another bushing. I mean, the housing probably needs to be replaced. And they probably will repair it, to be honest. If it's cheaper. From here back is like, not so bad. Okay, so in this case here, not a lot of the parts were reusable. I don't think any of them. It was just on that P1 though that had the most severe damage. That was where the bushing uh, was completely degraded. But all the pumps were gouged out from overpressurization. As with all the troubleshooting videos, if you send it to us, we don't charge you labor or inspection or testing. So if you got a repair and you want an analysis and video done by Lifco, send it in.